If you uh, back out a one-time charge, they actually beat the street by two pennies. So you can see uh, that's why the stock is showing a little bit of optimism today. But the reason why you're not seeing a huge rally in the stock is because of its outlook for 2008. They did come in very soft for uh, their guidance for 2008. And, uh, you know, again, and showing that Walmart's certainly not immune to the broader factors that are affecting the broader uh, retail sector at large. Now that stock is doing well. Office Max is up 7% today. The wow. stock is up 7%. They reported a 23% rise in fiscal fourth quarter net income, but they've also done a lot of cost cutting. Mm -hmm. Does that help Walmart as well? Yeah, this Walmart pursued a, a several pronged strategy, and if you look at the board, I've got uh, a look at sort of all the steps that Walmart took to get us to these great numbers that this company had. First, international sales was a huge growth driver. Uh, the the company actually saw sales abroad go 19%, which is huge because domestically sales only grew 5%. Then they did some massive cost cutting and price cutting. So they did reduce costs, but they also reduced prices at the front line for consumers, and that really helped them. I mean, back in November 2nd, they actually started, they kicked off their holiday campaign for, for holiday sales, reduced the prices on 15,000 items. They also improved uh, uh, customer service and they cut unprofitable product lines you know they had dabbled in things like fashionable uh, and trendy that clothes and things I mean that's not what people go to Walmart for right and they back out fashionable of paper clips but wasn't some of what really worked for Walmart this time around a pricier item and that would be the flat screen TV yes and certainly electronics did very well over the holiday season and that was a contributor to higher sales again it was stocking up on items that people wanted and at least for the holiday shopping season it was the flat screen TVs. All right, Shabani, stay with us if you can. We want to add in our Fox panel into this discussion. Gary Kalpam, what does this tell you about uh, the way retail sales are going in the country? Uh, it tells me Walmart's a great company and they continue to uh, attract uh, people into their stores. Look, all my research uh, and all my visits to other companies tells me that the consumer is pretty much uh, spent up and not pent up here. And I've been saying this for months. Uh, every number I'm saying, and if you just look at the retail index, uh, it's still down 25, 30 percent from the last few months. So I just think the consumer is going to continue to have some problems. And if we keep seeing oil heading north, uh, that's not going to help at all. Uh, oil, listen, does sometimes figure in gasoline, certainly, to Walmart's prices, Peter Schiff. I mean, they, they count that as part of their sales sometimes. And it, and it makes you wonder just what really is driving these numbers and what does it say about the consumer in the economy right now? Certainly. I think more and more of what consumers are buying at Walmart are everyday necessities like food stuff and, and oil. And I think the fact that Walmart is getting extra sales because they're advertising cheaper prices, I think those greater sales maybe are coming at the expense of their competitors as people are so desperate now for low prices that people who weren't shopping at Walmart are going, are are going there. But I think if you look at what's going on in China, China right now, you know, the source of cheap goods to Walmart is coming to an end. Look what's happening to inflation in China. We are exporting a lot of inflation to that nation. I think we're very close to a major, major upward realignment of the yuan, and that is going to make cheap Chinese imports a thing of the past. You're going to have to see across the board significant price increases at Walmart. Yeah, although, Victoria, they're kind of covered there in a way because Walmart stores are expanding all over China. In fact, the one place in which Walmart workers are unique unionized guess what it happened it's in China so they they are kind of spreading their risks by appealing to Chinese consumers sure that's gonna be where a lot of the consumer growth is gonna be going forward but Peter makes an important point point which is you know we have gotten cheap goods from China for so long and the only way that Walmart can lower prices while at the same time increasing their margins is by put, putting pressure on their suppliers many of which are in China and that can only last for so long Walmart is a fantastic company the fact that they could come out with good numbers in time like this really speaks to management but you know the consumer in, in the US is really strapped and the, you know Best Buy said that so much um, recently they're not looking sure for did. a great year yeah they sure did that's uh, that certainly shocked some, uh, some some shareholders of Best Buy that really felt, oh, wow, I've got the good company because Circuit City isn't doing as well. But, Pat, if exactly. what Peter says is true about the yuan, because, of course, the U.S. has pressured China to let its currency float more freely, that would mean that it's going to see an upward revision sure. eventually. 
Peter makes that point that these exports are going to become so much more expensive to the U.S. consumer that the $11 polo shirt at Walmart might not be $11 anymore. It might be 15 or something. Or it might be $11.35. You know, the fact is that if China gets too expensive, or it might be 50 bucks. We'll, we'll, go to, we'll go to Indonesia. <laughs> and if, if the Indonesians are, get really expensive, we'll move to Malaysia. There's lots of places for us to go and get and no, get All those goods. currencies are going to go and, up in tandem. Hold on a second. You know, I'm, I'm, she's not finished. Okay. Go ahead. You know, and, and unfortunately, there, there, is, uh, there was some inflation numbers that came out in China, and that's not good news for the Chinese. They're going to have to deal with that. But this is how free markets work. For, you know, we are, we are interrelated. Um, something that happens over there will flow through here. That will make maybe out, some of the things that we've been exporting or importing from there. Maybe we'll be able to have them made here. This is how free and another markets thing, work. Shabani, I want to bring yeah, Shabani in for a second understand. because Shabani, one thing that Walmart has proven is that even in retail sales, this increase in productivity, which is so important in our economy, has affected the way Walmart does business. They, they've computerized like they haven't done before. Their inventory is better under control than it has been before. So they are doing things that help it increase its productivity. Yeah, and they've certainly been an innovator in that space. I mean, you certainly take Walmart, you've seen Walmart take the lead and, and really see uh, and, and take on best practices practices that the entire sector, if not broader sectors, have followed and, and copied in that manner. But I think a big issue when we talk about international sales is, you know, everyone is worried about a global slowdown. And what is that going to mean? International sales are a big source of growth for Walmart. That could also highlight uh, uh, on the panel. Yeah, you have well, to remember. Hold on, Peter, one we, second. We, gang on the panel and to our viewers, oil just topped $100 a barrel. Now, we saw this yeah. Several weeks ago, but it's happening again right now. It's pulled back just a moment to ninety-nine dollars ninety-six cents. But there may be more conviction. No, there it is, a hundred this time around. Remember, last time it was one trade. Yeah, it's going to one hundred and fifty. Okay, why do you say that, Peter? <laughs> Well, I've, I've been right on it for years, but you know, there's well, a triple a, top years, in oil yeah, right now at 100. We have 150 yeah, years. <laughs> well, it'll be we, we have a triple top there at 100. I think there's a lot of people short. Uh, we're creating so much inflation. Remember, we are the source of all of China's inflation problems. Problems. We're exporting it to the world, and oil is about to explode, just like all the other commodities. I mean, look at platinum over two thousand dollars an ounce. Look at silver up almost fifty cents an ounce today. Look at soybeans at fourteen dollars a barrel. All these prices are rising in tandem because of the most inflationary monetary policies the world has ever seen. Oil's going to explode. I think it'll be $150 a barrel before the, the end of the year. The Weimar Republic has got to be thrown in there, Peter, <laughs> as one of those but that was inflationary experiments. That was just one country. That was one country. Yes, this I know. Really but this is the whole world. Anyway, demand. Pat, go ahead. It's still supply and demand. Yeah. Even though we're in a slowing world economy, we are not in a worldwide wide recession. OPEC is announcing that they're going to cut production. So we have a supply side dislocation. At the same time, demand is growing. It's inevitable until we, get our, act, until we get our act together the bigger, and change the supply dynamic. Okay, the, the, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger issue going forward is our savings rate stinks and the wealth effect, which was heading north for so long because people felt that their house prices would grow to infinitum, is now going south now. That is going to uh, affect consumer behavior, and that is my big worry going forward. And all this talk about a definition of recession or not, all I know is things are slowing down, and I hope they don't tip over. Just Victoria, so go ahead. You wanted to chime in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, oil prices have been going up for a long time, and it didn't seem to be hurting the American consumer. But what's different now is housing. We don't feel infinitely wealthy because our housing values are declining. So all of a sudden, gas, the price of gas matters a lot more. Okay, let me just tell you that the, yes, the, the height that it hit was $100.10. As you see, it was like touching a very hot stove. It pulled back to 99.97. But Shabani, what are you thinking here? This is this is a number that precisely affects Walmart's customers. It is a lower income consumer that reels back very suddenly with with changes in housing and changes in gasoline prices. This is a big deal. Going back to Walmart, this is a big deal to Walmart and its consumer base, particularly yeah. here in the U.S. Well, $100 oil is going to be the floor pretty soon. It's not going to be the ceiling anymore. You know, and what I'm used to be resistance will become support. I but, want to touch upon something ahead, Peter said. Uh, gift card statistics now, a ton of that is being spent on food and other necessities. Really? So that's heading that way also.
Well, it, it the, by the way, the price is just flirting with that hundred hundred dollar line. It may close above, it may close below, but it is significant uh, that for just a couple of minutes here, it was significantly above that hundred dollar mark. And some and, of this, keep in mind, if you're tuning in just now and you're saying, why is oil hitting a hundred dollars a barrel? You're getting different stories from different areas, but. We've got a couple of things going here. The Texas refinery explosion, the falling dollar, OPEC saying that it will keep supplies tight, at least some OPEC members, including Venezuela and Iran. So a lot of these things mm -hmm. coming together, David, to create a hundred dollar and ten cent a barrel. First time since January 3rd. We will wait and see where it settles. We're on oil next.